Now we've got Doug with Bike Walk Montana. Welcome to the show, Doug. Hey, Bill. How are you doing? I am doing quite well. I haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> it's been forever since I've walked by your doorway. <laughs> that's right. At least five minutes. Yeah, yeah without a doubt. So um, tell us what's going on. Well, just give us kind of the big overview of Bike Walk Montana really quick, and then what's going on more recently with uh, COVID-19 and how it's affecting your organization. Great. Well, uh, you know, I want to start out by first thanking and recognizing um, everyone that continues to support Bike Walk Montana and our other uh, Montana Shares members. Uh, it's, uh, it's a challenging time. Um, you know, when you're primary concern is the health of you and your family and people you love, it's it can be very distracting. <clears throat> but uh, your support, people's support is so important out there. And I just also want to thank Bill, you and Christy and Montana Shares because uh, you guys are per per persevering on and keeping us going and inspiring us as well. So thank you, Bill. And it's always great to work with you and, uh, uh, as well as share an office down the, down the hall. Um, Bike Walk Montana is a statewide organization that uh, we're, we're advocates. We advocate for, for alternative transportation. That's can be called multimodal transportation, alternative transportation. Um, it's non-motorized transportation of any kind, walking, bicycling, uh, uh, even uh, things like uh, skateboards, longboards, and certainly our folks in the disabled community that are either uh, moving slowly or in wheelchairs or, uh, and, uh, you know, we always have them in the forefront of our mind because often for them, um, they don't have the option of a motorized use, a motorized vehicle or something like that. So we work statewide um, and we also, we have a close five or 600 members or so across the state. Uh, so we're a membership organization uh, and we um, provide that link between uh, folks and um, uh, the, People are deciding our future for transportation, and that includes also national groups uh, and statewide groups, as well as our local partners and affiliates and individuals. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. we uh, we promote again. We're primary advocates, and you know we we try not to tell specifically what people should do or say about uh, things. Uh, we just encourage people to be involved in our transportation future because it's something we all need. We're seeing that more and more than ever before uh, as, um, as restrictions on our life and lifestyles come down the bike. Um, you know, one thing we are seeing is record number of people out on bicycles, uh, both on the trails as well as on the streets, um, trying to utilize that as a way to get exercise, to get to where they want to be, and, and often as the choice of how people want to move around their community for right. just recreation and fun, but for work, for employment, for getting your groceries, for going to church, uh, for going to school. Right. I mean, that's amazing right now to see that kind of activity out on the trails. I was biking Centennial Trail yesterday, and it's it's a busy place, and yeah. uh, with a lot more, you know, a lot of people have a lot more time on their hands, and and it's making a huge difference with the number of people that are taking advantage of our public spaces. So yeah, that's just, obviously one change. What else is going on as far as relating to COVID? And I just add, as you know, I love to add um, that that is a national and international uh, phenomena right now. And even places like New York City are, are seriously considering and have closed streets to, to vehicles. Uh, every other street, some situations and other ways where um, people are recognizing that this is really important and you know, we'll see when winter comes, that may change a little bit, but um, right. uh, even then it's just a matter of being prepared and getting out there and uh, hopefully the infrastructure is in place to do that. So we're not alone and we're right in the middle of it with everyone else. Um, in terms of so we can feel good about that. Hmm. Uh, um, with COVID, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of our uh, work was doing programs, events, classes, things that are in person. And uh, right up till uh, <laughs> uh, when we started to shut down, we were doing those all across the state and supporting other groups that are doing them. Things like, uh, uh, you know, things to raise awareness uh, of, uh, of the need for alternative transportation. So um, we have uh, moved past uh, the issues uh, in terms of uh, wondering when it's gonna change or if it went, how soon it's gonna go away more to uh, kind of, 
actually going with our uh, where we were already going already, which is to provide more resources across the state to the individuals. What we found is that everyone knows their own community the very best. They know the problem areas, they know the good places they're involved, they know their decision makers, whether it's state or local politicians. Um, hopefully they know their local transportation folks or local Department of Transportation, their city or town, county, as well as maybe their, even their local uh, DOT person. And so um, we're, we're continuing to follow down that, that path, so to speak, um, of trying to provide that. And actually I've found a positive thing that um, we already were Montana distance. Uh, and whether that's socially appropriate distancing or not, that's the way we are. And I found that uh, actually, uh, even with looking through a computer or a phone or a TV screen, you know, we're actually connecting more across the state with folks uh, that may not have been able to travel uh, and do things in person or come see how we were doing things and, and learn and take it home to their community. So uh, I think there's a silver, definitely a silver lining and it's something that we were, were doing. So uh, one thing is our, our website, uh, bikewalkmontana.org is a great um, resource. We hope it will be considered a great resource. And what we found also in the almost eight years that we've been together uh, as an organization, that now there's a lot more resources out there. There's national organizations that are doing very focused um, and, and excellent work. So we don't need to invent that, uh, that work. Uh, we sometimes will take it and refine it and change it for Montana. But um, you know, if we can send you to a state-of-the-art site that's gonna walk you through something or give you the very best up-to-date uh, information, then we're working on improving that ability. So that will be through our website. Uh, we've kind of reorganized as uh, everyone seems to be doing on a regular basis and uh, trying to update it. And uh, we're gonna continue doing that. I hope people that haven't been to our website for a while or have never been there will go check it out and, and let us know if there's things that can be do, be do better or that they'd like to see on there. There's always that contact us uh, button there to click on. So <clears throat> some of those programs that we're converting to more of a online uh, resource a uh, real popular thing, bike rodeos. That's where we teach our kids how to be safe out there. It's a lot of fun. I did one, I did one um, late fall out uh, at the fairgrounds with the 4-H group, and they're just a hoot. Uh, everyone has a good time. We kind of, kind of fool around a bunch, and uh, kids leave with a helmet and a, a reflector of some sort, and and their parents as well with information on how to be safe. And we want to create. First of all, keep them safe their whole lives, but also lifelong uh, walkers and bicyclists and advocates, we hope. Uh, so that's a fun thing. And we're, we, again, we have information for that. Walking School Bus, again, it's another one of our youth programs. We really focus on kids because, you know, first of all, they pay better attention sometimes to adults. But um, we also um, know that those kids are part of the 30% of our population in Montana that don't have a driver's license. And so how are they supposed to get along or get around? And we figured out that if you uh, take your kid to school and drop them off and you only idle five minutes a day, you're going to spend 30 hours in a school year idling in your car. And uh, that's zero miles per gallon at that point. So no matter what you're driving, unless you have it turned off, um, you know, you're using up resources. And we really encourage it. Uh, and that's a walking school bus. Kids, kids walk together to school with supervision. And we have programs in Helena, Whitefish, Missoula has them, Billings, and we hope to expand that. Um, walk audits is another thing we're really encouraging our transportation partners to consider. And this is just integrating, spending some time together. If you're going to do an improvement on a street, particularly if it's going to have some sidewalk or bike amenities proposed, or you're wondering what could happen there, you all get out together, take some time. There's a process for doing it. And again, we have information on our website. Um, to uh, take a look at that piece of street or that neighborhood and say, well, what's good, what's bad about it? Let's, um, let's uh, figure out how to improve this. So when your Department of Transportation or your uh, city transportation department comes out with a proposal, it's already been vetted, you've had good public input, and it's much better than just a public meeting where probably most of the decisions have been made. And it's just a way also to build community, which is what we're trying to do. because our transportation um, systems connect us as communities and between communities. 
as, as we found out, as we always knew, but we may find out, you know, more now, they're really necessary. And so we, we really are promoting that as one of our few things that we want to see our best patient partners do and do better and do well. It's a real positive thing. Um, we're also working on a program for adults called Senior Walks or Walk Audits for Wellness. We're just getting going on this here in Helena. Uh, it's been a little challenging because it's based on getting together and meeting. As we know, our senior living centers are uh, at higher risk with COVID. So uh, we hope we'll pull that off this fall. Um, and that's uh, just basically looking um, around a senior living center and seeing um, what's the opportunities for those people to walk, walk, bike, or roll to, uh, you know, the store, to the drugstore, to uh, see their family, their kids, if their kids live in the neighborhood, um, get to church, uh, get some exercise, get to a park. So we're just basically applying the walk audit idea uh, around senior centers, and then they'll be able to, uh, them and their uh, their advocates will be able to say, hey, here's something, if, you, if we just could replace this sidewalk, our, our, uh, our clients, our customers, our, our family will be able to get around uh, by foot. And one thing that people may forget, especially like myself getting older, is that this really helps with your cognitive uh, functions. It's been shown to help slow Alzheimer's uh, and other uh, memory challenges. And you know, it, it just makes sense. Rather than sitting in your room or sitting in, at, in the building, you're moving around, blood's flowing, you're feeling better about yourself. All the positive benefits of exercise. We think about the young fit folks in Lycra, um, but you know, everyone needs it and everyone needs it a lot. So um, that's another program I'm really excited about getting going and we look to do that. Great. Um, another one of our online presences is with our e-letters, and we we uh, send we have several mailing lists or email lists. One is our membership, of course, and we hope a lot of people are in there. But we also have a ma mailing emailing of about over 2,000 folks that are we've made contact with over the years that are interested in that, and we send those out periodically. Sometimes it will be for a certain area, uh, like Helena. Missoula, hey, there's something going on in your community. And sometimes there's more statewide. And we also try to provide links for people to our national organizations, which there's a whole number of those. And uh, so that's one benefit. And uh, anyone's welcome to get on our email list. Again, go to our website. Um, it shows you how to do that. And we'd love to be in touch with you, uh, hopefully as a member. But we're also glad just to keep you, you know, if we can encourage anyone to be an advocate, you know, uh, we, we're successful. Yeah. Great. So it sounds like you're staying busy, even though the the times are changing. Absolutely. You know, there was kind of a lull period there. I think we all felt it where we were trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Um, we had to cancel uh, a number of events or the ones that we were going to participate. We had to cancel our big statewide summit, which is every two years. And we do hope to bring that back in some way this fall. Seems like people are getting uh, Zoom and, and video burnout, but I think we're uh, going to try to pull together a couple nationally known experts, and I can't really announce it yet, but uh, in September to talk and uh, and do an online event that will hopefully bring our community together. So uh, um, we're definitely, there. I, I can't believe how much work there is to be done out there. Um, I'm going to, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about DOT. I mentioned them earlier, our, our Montana Department of Transportation. Um, I want to encourage people to work with their local offices. Uh, you can find their contact information on, on their website. Um, you know, look up uh, Montana Department of Transportation district offices and, and, and expand or start a conversation with those folks. They really determine what's gonna happen on the state highways, both on the state system and the local system. And many of them are ready and willing to do good work for our, all of us who need to get around, all travelers of all sorts. And the more they hear from local folks, that's proven to be the most effective. Uh, and I'll give a couple examples in Missoula. Uh, they're making great progress there. Uh, if you haven't been over there, the new, uh, I think it's Reserve Street, they've just finished that huge project. And these are multi, million dollar projects. Nothing is cheap anymore. Um, but um, they are working closely and they're actually uh, 
ongoing meetings with our local office and legislators to talk about how to improve interaction with, with uh, our Department of Transportation. Uh, again, great people. They're engineers, so their specialty, <laughs> their specialty is, and, you know, you can tell a, an extrovert engineer because he's looking at your shoes rather than, than their shoes. But, um, you know, they're great folks, but they are, uh, you know, they're problem solvers. They're, they're uh, you know, we, we need the very best engineers in the country. We need those folks. But um, um, reach out to them. They, they, I think, most cases welcome that. Uh, we're also asking uh, DOT to fill. They have a bike ped position, and we're working with them and encouraging them to fill that position. It's been vacant for a couple of years. Uh, people have been covering it, but um, we need a dedicated position to, especially in these days now, to move that forward. Um, they have been asked by our legislature to uh, the interim committee to make a bike walk committee, uh, which would be great to have a group of citizens, and we have many, many across the state that are, are knowledgeable and interested in helping get our system better. So we hope to see that happen as well. Great. Um, Sounds like my you're last, really uh, busy. <laughs> well, yeah, you're, uh, uh, you walk down the hall and you see me and sometimes I'm, uh, I'm uh, not as busy as I could be, but most of the times I feel like I get done with the end of the day and it's, uh, wow, so much to do. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to speak a little bit about Helena. Um, it's, mm -hmm. uh, of course, both our hometown and kind of following up on the on the local aspect, uh, we have uh, over 100 members here in Helena, and they constitute, uh, whether they know it or not, Bike Walk Helena. And um, again, as an example of working locally, uh, we're working with our, our great uh, city committee, the Non-Motorized uh, Travel and Transportation Advisory Council. Um, we're working with them in the city to do some things right here in Helena, and there's a lot of things going on. Um, this week, they'll be turning on a flashing light on Last Chance Gulf, which has been needed for a long time. Uh, slow down the traffic there and create a great connection with um, um, the motels uh, down, down the gulch, as well as uh, Centennial Park. Uh, and it goes right by uh, Big Sky Cyclery, so you can buy some parts while you're going by there. Scott's been there a long time. They're doing a bike, uh, bike walk path on Benton. Um, they're working hard on sidewalk connections. Uh, our city is really stepping up, but we still need uh, people to, to talk to them about it. The number one project we're working on as an organization is our Great Centennial Trail, which is, um, you know, I think uh, can be, will become the envy of many communities. It's not unlike the River's Edge Trail in Great Falls. You know, it's kind of that core um, uh, backbone trail system that could hopefully connect all of Helena and maybe beyond Helena to the rest of the state and the world. And so our, our number one project is Henderson Bridge. Anyone that's crossed Henderson on Centennial Trail know it's a really challenging, uh, steep, gravelly, slippery downhill and back uphill on a busy street with not much sign of light. And we're just waiting. The city has met with uh, Burlington Northern Santa Fe and I'm gonna help try to move things along. Uh, a number of months ago, they met and agreed on a surveyed location um, we just need that in place and we'll start doing fundraising and, um, and get that bridge built. I, I, hope, I hope soon. Um, I've been hoping that for a while, but it's, it's really needed. Uh, the other piece of that would be to try to figure out how we're going to get uh, the middle portion of Centennial Trail uh, from basically right near here by your bike walk Montana off of Lindale uh, across Montana and into the sixth ward and connect to the trail that eventually makes its way to East Helena. And, um, you know, the weakest link in a trail is whatever is the most difficult spot. The most difficult spot is the weak link and people will avoid that if there's one really bad spot and we have a couple. Um, and wouldn't it be great if you get on your bike and or walk and go almost anywhere in town and then connect hopefully to bike trails and, and uh, shared use paths and get all around and and park that car and um, not be putting gas in. But, uh, so um, those are the things we're working on. Uh, we hope to have uh, another community garden ride that was really popular last year, working with the uh, Helena Community Garden folks to do that. And we may have a, a bike swap as well. Um, and we uh, work with our partner, Queen City Cyclery, which is again, we've got great folks here in Helena uh, between the bike clubs, um, of course our Prickly Paralan Trust and, um, and all the other folks, the stores 
and all our partners. So that's fantastic. And I see my time is up. So thanks so much, Bill. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds great. Thank you for coming on the show. Have a great day.